Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for our August the 12th of 2022's lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students from the original edition, Lesson 224. God is my Father, and He loves His Son. God is my Father, and He loves His Son. My true identity is so secure, so lofty, sinless, glorious, and great, wholly beneficent, and free from guilt that heaven looks to it to give it light. It lights the world as well. It is the gift my Father gave me, the one as well I give the world. There is no gift but this that can be either given or received. This is reality, and only this. This is illusion's end. It is the truth. God is my Father, and he loves his son. My name, O Father, still is known to you. I have forgotten it and do not know where I am going, who I am or what it is I do. <laughs> Remind me, Father, now, for I am weary of the world I see. Reveal what you would have me see instead. <laughs> I have forgotten it. My, my, my name, O oh Father, still is known to you. I've forgotten it and do not know where I'm going or who I am or what it is I do. Remind me, Father, now, for I am weary of the world I see. Reveal what you would have me see instead. Wow, what a nice prayer. Okay, let's go take a look in our text reading. We're going to finish the chapter 24, Specialness and Separation. Let's pick up in, in uh, we're in section 8, the meeting place, and let's pick up in paragraph 69. And as you're turning there, uh, if you want to follow along, let me tell you about another um, runner bean. Remember, these are the cool weather beans. Uh, they prefer, prefer cooler temperatures. And I'm reading to you from the Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And this is the Benchmaster runner bean. British bred, competition length runner bean with culinary pizzazz. Giant vegetable competitions are a serious business in Great Britain. This record breaker can grow up to 16 inches while maintaining excellent flavor. Produces clusters of beautiful red flowers that give way to uniform tasty pods. Benchmaster received an RHS Award of Garden Merit for performance and reliability. Competitive growers will thin to just one flower per cluster to achieve a record breaker. Anyway, these are the Benchmaster runner beans. Those runner beans are your Fasciolus coccinius. I'm not sure that's the right genus and species pronunciation, but we'll give her a try. All right, let's take a look now in uh, paragraph 69. This course makes no attempt to teach what cannot easily be learned. Wow, that's nice to know, isn't it? This course makes no attempt to teach what cannot easily be learned. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and and I said, we're having an argument about whether or not you're vulnerable. And I'm saying you're invulnerable. And you're saying you're vulnerable. You see why that's important? Because you believe you're vulnerable. Well, then you'll succumb to the, um, the world of pain and illusion. But if you realize you're invulnerable, then you'll, you'll ask for God's help and say, hey, I'm feeling like I'm vulnerable right now. I need some help. And you'll use forgiveness to straighten out your mind. All right? This course makes no attempt to teach what cannot be easily learned. Its scope does not exceed your own, except to say that what is yours will come to you when you are ready. Here are the means and purpose separate, because they were so made and so perceived. And therefore do we deal with them as if they were. It is essential it be kept in mind that all perception still is upside down until its purpose has been understood. 
it is essential it be kept in mind that all perception still is upside down until its purpose has been understood. Perception does not seem to be a means, and it is this that makes it hard to grasp the whole extent to which it must depend on what you see it for. Perception does not seem to be a means, and it is this that makes it hard to grasp the whole extent to which it must depend on what you see it for. Perception, perception seems to teach you what you see, yet it but witnesses to what you taught. It is the outward picture of a wish, an image that you wanted to be true. Yeah, you know, isn't that something? He's given us the cause of perception there. 70. Look at yourself and you will see a body. Look at this body in a different light, and it looks different. And without a light, it seems that it is gone. Yet you are reassured that it is there because you still feel it with your hands and hear it move. Here is an image that you want to be yourself. It is the means to make your wish come true. It gives the eyes with which you look on it, the hands that you feel it, and the ears with which you listen to the sounds it makes. It proves its own reality to you. Let's read that sentence again. It gives the eyes with which you look on it, the hands that feel it, and the ears with which you listen to the sounds it makes. It proves its own reality to you. 71. Thus is the body made a theory of yourself with no provisions made for evidence beyond itself and no escape within its sight. Its course is sure when seen through its own eyes. It grows and withers, flourishes and dies, and you cannot conceive of you apart from it. You brand it sinful and you hate its acts, judging it evil. Yet your specialness whispers, Here is my own beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Thus does the Son become the means to serve His Father's purpose. And that word Father is not in capitalized because it's talking about the, you know, the, the ego that's considering, that considers itself to be the Father of the body. <laughs> the proof of illusions. <laughs> Uh, let's back up. Here is my own beloved son, it whispers, in whom I am well pleased. Wow, taking a quote from the Bible, and yet it's using it in a way that clearly is not um, biblical from an understanding from A Course in Miracles, is it? Thus does the son become the means to serve his father's purpose. Not identical, not even like, but still a means to offer to the father what he wants. Such is the travesty on God's creation. For as his son's creation gave him joy and witnesses to his love and shared his purpose, so does the body testify to the idea that made it and speak for its reality and truth. In the last paragraph, 72, And thus are two sons made, and both appear to walk this earth without a meeting place and no encounter. One, do you see outside yourself, your own beloved son. The other rests within, his father's son, and that word is capitalized, his father's son within your brother as he is in you. The other rests within, his father's son, within your brother as he is in you, within your brother as he is within you. Their difference does not lie in how they look, nor where they go, nor even what they do. They have a different purpose. It is this that joins them to their like and separates each from all aspects with a different purpose. Let's read that again. It is this that joins them to their like 
and separates each from all aspects with a different purpose. The Son of God retains his Father's will. The Son of Man perceives an alien will and wishes it were so. And thus does his perception serve his wish by giving it appearances of truth. Yet can perception serve another goal? It is not bound to specialness, but by your choice. And it is given you to make a different choice and use perception for a different purpose. And what you see will serve that purpose well and prove its own reality to you. <laughs> okay, wow, there's a lot we could say there, but I just encourage you to read it until it comes into clarity for yourself. Okay, let's, um, at least that's what I do. <laughs> a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in this book isn't clear to me until I just keep looking at it and looking at it. And finally it just kind of opens up and all, oh, that's what it's saying. Come to it with an open mind, realizing that it's simple. That he's not teaching us something that's difficult to understand. Okay, let's go take a look again. That sure does speak well of our, our, our uh, lesson today. God is my father and he loves his son. God is my father, and he loves his son. But let before we uh, read the uh, What is Forgiveness, let's take just a minute and look at, um, in our introduction, we read paragraph 1, 2, and 3 yesterday. Uh, let's read 3 again and, and 4. We will continue with a central thought for all the days to come. This is trying to teach us how to... Um, how to do our lessons, these last 150 lessons of the book, roughly. And we will use that thought. We will continue with a central thought for all the days to come, and we will use that thought to introduce our times of rest and calm our minds at need. Yet we will not content ourselves with simple practicing in the remaining holy instance, which conclude the year that we have given God. We say some simple words of welcome and expect our Father to reveal himself, as he has promised. <laughs> we have called on him, and he has promised that his Son will not remain unanswered when he calls his name. That's why we remember we, we want to be aware when we've lost our peace, and then call for help when we realize we've lost it, and get our miracle, a new perception, a new way of looking at things to where we feel like we see that we're holy sons of God and the whole world is holy with us. We're freed with, with the whole world. Now do we come to him with but his word upon our minds and hearts and wait for him to take the step to us that he has told us through his voice he would not fail to take when we invited him. He has not left his son in all his madness, nor betrayed his trust in him. Has not his faithfulness earned him the invitation that he seeks to make us happy? Wow, that's a nice thing to say. Has not God's faithfulness earned him the invitation that he seeks to make us happy? <laughs> we will offer it and it will be accepted. So our times with him will now be spent. We say the words of invitation that his voice suggests. And then we wait for him to come to us. Now is the time of prophecy fulfilled. Now is the time of prophecy fulfilled. You know, uh, well, let's go ahead and look a little bit more to that. Now are all ancient promises upheld and fully kept. No step remains for time to separate from its accomplishment. For now we cannot fail. And when he says now is the time of prophecy fulfilled, it reminds me, and you know, there's maybe a lot more there that we can look at and understand, but it certainly reminds me of Romans 8, 19. And out of the King James Version, it says, For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, that was written 2,000 years ago. I'd say that's fairly ancient. Um, it may not be as ancient as what he's referring to, but it, it, it may be. Uh, for the creation, we're the creation, 
waits with eager longing, not just us, but everything, waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Well, with the, through our undoing process, using forgiveness, we're now becoming manifest or re being revealed as what we truly are, the holy sons of God. Now is the time of prophecy fulfilled. Now are all ancient promises upheld and fully kept. No step remains for time to separate from its accomplishment. For now we cannot fail. Sit silently and wait upon your Father. Sit silently and wait upon your Father. He has willed to come to you when you have recognized it is your will. He do so. And you could have never come this far unless you saw however dimly that it is your will. <laughs> Let's read those last couple sentences again. Sit silently and wait upon your Father. This is what we want to really do in these lessons. Is sit silently and wait upon your Father. He has willed to come to you when you have recognized it is your will he do so. And you could have never come this far unless you saw however dimly that it is your will that your Father come to you. Sit silently and wait upon your Father. He has willed to come to you when you have recognized it is your will he do so. And you could have never come this far unless you saw however dimly that it is your will. Okay, well, I just love that. Um, you know, I wanted to, before we, we, I did have something else I wanted to tell you about, if I can find it, I had, a, yes. I wanted to tell you a little more about the white oak. I'm sitting behind a wet white oak. It rained a lot. Here's a white oak and white oak leaves. How the, the bottom's a little lighter than the top. That's true with a lot of leaves, but uh, they're, they're, they're pretty strongly lobed. Just trying to get you to where you can identify white oak. Uh, the, the, uh, those two trees behind me are a black oak, and you can't really tell because of it raining, but they're much darker, and the white oak is much lighter. It's a little darker because it's wet, but that's a real good identifying characteristic. Uh, look, I found this on a website called euphoricherbals.com about the white oak bark, Quercus alba bark. Certain Native American tribes used it for antiseptic and anti-inflammatory. Acorns of the white oak were used as a food source. White oak bark is well known as an astringent herb not only having anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties, it can help stop bleeding. It's a styptic. Has been used for its benefits to varicose veins, has been used on skin externally for eczema, cuts, burns, and bruises. It is per particularly helpful for sores oh for sore or bleeding gums and infections of the mouth it benefits digestion and urinary health besides diarrhea is thought to be effective against certain parasites and can tone tissues in your digestive tract that's a lot of good qualities of the of the white oak bark. White oak bark generally is what's used. Okay, let's go take our, our look now at what is forgiveness, and then we'll read our lesson again, and then you can have your quiet time of uh, however long makes you happy. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not... <clears throat> It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. And in this view are all your sins forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. 
An unforgiving thought is one which makes a judgment that it will not raise to doubt, although it is not true. The mind is closed and will not be released. The thought protects projection, tightening its chains so that distortions are more veiled and more obscure, less easily accessible to doubt and further kept from reason. What can come between a fixed projection and the aim that it has chosen as its needed goal? An unforgiving thought does many things. In frantic action, it pursues its goal, twisting and overturning what it sees as interfering with its chosen path. Distortion is its purpose and the means by which it would accomplish it as well. It sets about its furious attempts to smash reality without concern for anything that would appear to pose a contradiction to its point of view. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality nor seeks to twist it to appearances that it likes. It merely looks and waits and judges not. He who would not forgive must judge, for he must justify his failure to forgive. But he who would forgive himself must learn to welcome truth exactly as it is. Do nothing then and let forgiveness show you what to do. Through him who is your guide, your savior and defender, strong in hope and certain of your ultimate success, he has forgiven you already. For such is his function given him by God. Now must you share his function and forgive whom he has saved, whose sinlessness he sees, and whom he honors as the Son of God. God is my Father, and he loves his Son. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Take these lessons to heart. Be sure to do your two extended periods of uh, as long as makes you happy and that fulfills your deepest desires. And then do your hourly remembrance of the idea for today. Sit quietly in any of those hours and time between those hours. Just and, and tell yourself often today, God is my father and he loves his son. God is my father and he loves his son. My true identity is so secure, so lofty, sinless, glorious, and great, wholly beneficent, and free from guilt, that heaven looks to it to give it light. It lights the world as well. It is the gift my Father gave me, the one as well I give the world. There is no gift but this that can be either given or received. This is reality. And only this, this is illusion's end. It is the truth. God is my Father, and He loves His Son. My name, O Father, still is known to you. I have forgotten it and do not know where I am going, where I am, or what it is I do. Remind me, Father, now, for I am weary of the world I see. Reveal what you would have me see instead. Reveal what you would have me see instead. Say that prayer and mean it. And until tomorrow, God is my Father, and He loves His Son. God is my Father, and He loves His Son.